So I just thought I'd do a sort of a an update waffly type video. It's been a little while since I've put a video up again. Obviously I've been carrying on with this Amiga 600 series. Well, it, it wasn't meant to be a series but it, it sort of ended up as that. Uh, I've not given up on that. Obviously I've not put a video up for a while on it but I've not given up on it or anything. I uh, just haven't done any more content on it to, or any more work on it to, to have the content to put up. Um, hopefully I'll get some more done on that this weekend. I've, I really need to sort of crack on with it, but I'll probably talk about that a bit more later on. And a couple of other projects as well. Um, this is actually my sort of own setup here on this desk. All a bit makeshift really. Not my old Lenovo laptop there that I use for odds, odds and ends and uh, Linux system, Linux PC there. Uh, I've done a video on sort of an upgrade of that system, but I've not actually put anything up on that yet. Uh, one of the larger sort of projects that's that I had in mind was uh, a sort of a PC build-a-thon. I recorded a load of footage on that last year, but again, I've just not done any more on it, including the build of or well, rebuild of that, or as I perhaps should call it, the rebodge of that. Uh, just to get me by for now. Um, over here, this is my sort of work PC setup that I've makeshifted on top of this little set of cupboards and a, a little like fold out dining table here which I can use to sit at. It's a bit far from the screens but it, it's good enough. And the work PC hiding down there. The light in this room is really bad so I have to apologise for that. It's quite a nice little machine this. It's uh, an 8 core Ryzen with 32 gig of RAM. It's a nicer case, a nicer system than what I'm running. And uh, as you can see, my work PC has RGB even, and my home one doesn't. <laughs> so it's a bit sad when you're into technology and your work PC is better than your personal one. There's definitely something wrong there. And at the minute, I've got both of these systems running this folding at home client. Um, if you've watched sort of Linus Tech Tips you'll probably know a bit about that and I'll probably put some links to this in the uh, in the description somewhere. I've actually, because this is a work system, I've got this running in a virtual machine at the moment because I didn't really want to install it directly on the system for obvious reasons. Um, what I might actually do is make a, see if I can make a Linux bootable USB stick and run it off of that. If I can make a sort of a a persistable one where it saves obviously any updates. You can make a Linux boot uh, USB stick dead easy and that's that's pretty much how the installer works. But I'm not sure about uh, one where it persists any installations and updates. So something I'll perhaps want to have a look into. Because it'll be more efficient than running this under a VM. Uh, but I've just had it running. I mean this, this machine sat here doing nothing. It makes sense to do something with it like this because this obviously is helping towards uh, resolving this current problem we're facing and I've got it running here on my Linux machine as well which is just uh, I think it's a fourth gen i5 quad core system so yeah I'll uh, talk a little bit about that a little bit more about that in a minute uh, part of this as I was saying like this PC building or PC build-a-thon thing that I mentioned over here I did actually have a big stack of uh, well, various things, about four or five Dell, old Dell Optiplex towers, which again is something I was working on uh, doing something with last year. I've recorded a load of footage and I haven't done anything with it. I might chuck that up on the screen if I if I can be bothered. So I had a stack of them here, uh, at least one 14 inch TV, a couple of tape decks and all sorts, all the way stacked up to the height of that notice board, various things. So I've had to get that out of the way to set up for work. Which has been interesting. I mean, this this week I've lost a day somewhere because I was convinced it was Wednesday, and then I heard the dustbin lorry pull up outside with the bins, and that comes on a Thursday. So it just kind of shows how crazy the week's been. Uh, obviously, this this lockdown thing was imposed on Monday, but we didn't really get out of our place until Wednesday for whatever reasons. Uh, obviously, trying to get people set up with their systems to work from home like I'm now doing here uh, actually is a, a good case really for 
IP telephony really because because these phones are IP based we could pretty much take them home and plug them in so just sort of using the the internal phone system uh, out of work really it's it's turned out quite useful I don't know how much work I'm going to be able to do from home long term because obviously even though in IT there's always things that can be done there's improvements and projects that can be worked on um, a lot of it will also be dependent on other staff members and their workload and the company I work for the ultimate end result is something that's manufactured and then an installation of that manufactured uh, goods those manufactured goods so there's, there's going to be a limit to what can be done um, and obviously there's a limit at the moment to with any business to how many sort of new customers they're getting and uh, things they can sell so well, we'll see uh, but obviously try and keep going as long as you can um, obviously one of the things that's been on my mind is well if, if there isn't work to do then I'm gonna have a lot of free time at home and what can I do with that but I have to say I do I almost feel a sense of guilt thinking about it like that because it's almost like taking advantage of the situation which it's not really it's it's making the best of a bad situation but you know you think there's there's people dying and it's it sort of it doesn't seem right to think well what can I do with this free time it's I don't know it's a, it's a funny situation really just have to try and make the best of it and well as I say I consider myself to be for, much more fortunate than a, a lot of the people are who don't have jobs now and or people that have got people that are sick or or worse so what I'm running here is this folding at home client on my Linux PC and this is basically this basically acts as a node in a massive distributed processing system and what this does is solve sort of complex problems to do with medical research I don't really fully understand the, the details so you, you need to look on the the folding at home website to to learn more about that but this is basically being used at the moment to, to sort of help fight this current problem and try and find a solution to it uh, I found about found out about this through the Linus Tech Tips video that was up recently and I'll try and put a link to that in the description and there's been a fairly significant uptake of people uh, installing this and run it, running it so much so that at the moment they're struggling to actually have enough uh, jobs to assign to people that want to try and run jobs uh, I think I've got the web page somewhere. so this is on one of the forum pages now I put links into all these different things um, they've basically had a 20 times increase in demand because that many people have decided to try and help and contribute to this and they're now in a situation where the servers can't feed the data out fast enough to people trying to process the data which is one of the reasons if you do run this you get quite a few periods where it will sit waiting for, for work to do um, there's no guarantee that the work that you're assigned is going to be to do with fighting this current issue it could be some of the other things they're working on uh, but it doesn't necessarily matter obviously it, it helps so and you can see on here you get your own sort of ID and name you can set your name I don't know if the names are unique or not but that's my name and you can also join a team so you can sort of team your efforts together with other people 223518 is actually the Linus Tech, te te the Linus Tech Tips team so I just decided to contribute mine to that one since that, were, that was where I found out about this so yeah I mean this PC often ends up left on when it shouldn't be so it might as well be doing something useful this can also use any graphics card processing power you've got so if you've got some fairly decent graphics cards then you can assign work to that as well as your and your CPU as well uh, so that's pretty good really uh, this is the main sort of folding at home web page and uh, you can see it's available for a number of systems they've got Linux Windows and Mac versions and the Linux one was pretty straightforward it was a I'm running Linux Mint, so it was a Debian package or .deb package. I just ran a couple of the installers. I think the the main one, which is let me think what it's called. Yeah, so there's the the client, which is the actual thing that does the work, and then there's a control one, which allows you to access the different configurations and things, which is basically this this um, program here. So you can see what's going on and and change settings, and you can configure it. 
for different levels of work. So I think, I think that's actually here, there's a slider. So you can set it to either use just idle time when you're not using the PC and then it will kick in. Or you can, if you are using it, you can set the amount of processing time that is allocated to this so that it's not you know, making your system unusable. So going back to the um, sort of project side of things, under the desk down here I've got these two pretty big beefy tower cases. This was again was going to be part of this PC build-a-thon thing that I was going to do. Um, well, I will still be doing it, hopefully I can perhaps try and get a video on that to, to gather from what I've done so far and then continue on with that. Uh, originally I bought one of these big tower cases because I wanted to set up a file server. But when I got hold of it, I realised these would be ideal for under here. But I used to have two fairly boring beige, well, these are fairly boring beige cases really, but I used to have a couple of old uh, MIDI tower cases under here, which I've more recently I got rid of those. I used to run two systems. That, that was the that's sort of the design of this desk to be able to have a couple of PCs here, and the, the back of this section is completely open. Now I've got a little love little pioneer amp there and on this side which i try not to show too much of because it's a, a bit of a mess under here that was there's all these rails where i used to have brackets and then a shelf and i used to have uh, stereo separate hi-fi stuff set up here so a bigger amp and tape deck cd player all that kind of stuff and then at the back there's just a bit more of a solid piece of wood for strength and a bit of an opening at the top for airflow just to let any excess heat out um, I've got some of my stereo separate still, but I don't tend to use them and they're not set up. Something I would like to get more set up in the future, at least a, a decent amp and the speakers. Uh, some switches at the back there just tucked away. So, yeah, also under here I've got this air filter which you can barely see, a big grey box looking thing. Uh, Dave Jones on EEV blog and Fran Blanche have both been actually covering uh, these blue air filters uh, I think yesterday and today they've done some videos on those they're, they're really good they're not cheap which is one of the reasons I bought mine second hand on eBay but they do work very very well they do help keep the dust down a bit though it's still pretty dusty in here but it, it when you clean if you try and clean these filters off see how much they collect you realize just how much they have pulled out of the air so uh, with these uh, as I say the, the plan was to build a server in these but I've decided to keep them as the two main desktop PC cases because they're an ideal fit under here and, and they are deep that case goes all the way to the back of the desk there's a, a little there's a video backup system printed out there it's a bit dusty on there that's quite deep I think these have got to be a good 50 centimeters if not more maybe 60 huge great thing uh, really for servers and you can actually take the top and bottom panel off and there's some holes and you can then rail mount these and have them sideways and they're actually the same width as a rack mount system so that's the idea you can then use them as a rack mount server which is not what I'm intending to do so that's that's going to be one of the projects um, they're screwed on so I can't really take the side off at this stage uh, I'll try and do some kind of a I don't know if the review is worthwhile because I don't even know if you can get hold of these anymore because I've not seen any. I keep looking. I think they've they've ran out. They're not cheap. I mean, considering they're they don't exactly they're not exactly lookers. Um, they're about 70, 80 quid I think. This one was cheaper because it didn't have the door. I think the door was broken on this one, so I got it cheaper. But to be honest, the um, the door's hideous, so I don't really want the door. You get a box of bits with them. So I've got a, a pretty meaty uh, dual Z on board that I've had for ages and never really put to good use. So I want to try and get that set up in here and get Windows installed on it and perhaps try and use that as a, a video editing machine and get some use out of it before it's completely obsolete. One of the things I wanted to do is build a case with a filtered air inlet and with this sort of design here, you've got these five bays here. These could be removed, and then you've obviously got the, the metal framework behind there for drive to be mounted in, like CD drives or whatever. 
that could actually be turned into a filter and because this case is so deep you could have quite a substantial chunk of this case for a filter system and some fans and then still have plenty of room even for a, a fairly large board including this Xeon board which is not exactly small either to be fair so there should be plenty of room in there to do that and then you've still got three drive bays for your optical drives that nobody uses anymore and a, a floppy drive which nobody uses anymore I'll probably mount um, I've got a blu-ray drive one of those M-Disc DVD writers and I've got a really good CD drive which is good for ripping audio CDs it's a, one of the old Plexters and then in that I'll probably put a hot swap um, drive bay I've got some discs that will fit in there it's like a and it's like a caddy for a two and a half inch laptop drive and you can use it with USB it's an older one so it's only USB 2 but it's also got SATA ports on the back so you can dock them and dock them straight onto a hot swap uh, SATA bay really good and brilliant for backups they're made by StarTech they do still sell them they've, there's a um, mine was like a an aluminium silver aluminium looking one they sell them uh, I think they're still aluminium but they're they're black and they're stupidly priced now it's a shame they're selling them for so much because if they were cheaper I think they'd sell a lot more another aspect of this PC building and why I want to try and get on with sorting out all the hardware and stuff I've got is because of situations like this here I've got stacks and stacks of discs uh, hard disks I'm talking about with various things on some of it's just perhaps stuff I've downloaded uh, video and stuff some of its um, backups I've got multiple copies of backups backups with say that year's worth of data on plus an archive of a previous backup drive so it, it's it's turned into a bit of a mess really and there's so many discs I've got like this and there's what two four six there's eight nine hard drives there and I imagine not one of those is below a terabyte and then in here I've got all these two and a halves which we use for backups and I've even got SSDs and because I've not sorted out a proper NAS what's ended up happening is these have not gone in systems and been used as backups which is just a ridiculous waste and again not another two four six eight ten eleven twelve thirteen drives there some of these are small some of them may only be say 500 gig maybe 250 300 but they've all probably got stuff on and multiple copies so one of the reasons to try and get on with this is to get a decent probably a ZFS based NAS system up and running dump everything on it sort it out and then have a proper backup and archive strategy rather than this utter chaos and worse still I've got another box somewhere with more long term stuff with probably 25 30 more hard drives in it again probably minimum size drive 250 gig up to a terabyte and I think there's another box on top of that with much, much older stuff probably like your 80 gig IDEs and things but it all needs going through it's it's just ridiculous uh, down here another stack this was uh, when I was again when I was having a go at building this NAS before and just gave up really various reasons I think there's four four terabyte SAS drives strapped together on that that uh, metal work there so again that's uh, just a complete waste I don't think there's anything on them I don't think I ever got it up and running properly because I got in a bit of a mess I made the mistake of thinking that just because a, um, a RAID controller or a host bridge adapter had got SAS style ports on it or the I can't remember what the the number of it of the port is that it would work but it's not it's, it was a SATA only controller so again I've, I think I've got the controllers I've bought the stuff I mean, I mean I don't even know what I've got anymore it's ridiculous so I say it's uh, if we are going to be off work there's not really any excuse anymore for me to not sort this out make the most of the uh, time and at least try and make some headway with some of this stuff so with respect to the little project room I've sort of had, a, had to have a good tidy up again because things got out of hand it often seems to be the case and I think 
part of the problem for this, I think, is because I'm I'm still not organised enough. I keep saying this. Um, I've got everything sort of shoved on the top here in boxes. But I think one of the big problems is I've got things like this here. This box is just full of parts that have been bought for things and taken off of things. Like that's probably out of a, I'm guessing, an A600. And they need places. Then everything just shoved in a box is no good. They need, yeah, I know the thing I want is in here somewhere, but it's no good having to root through all this every time to find something. So they need putting away. And I've, I think I've still got quite a few empty drawers on here so I should be able to find the space for them and then the same here repeat of that but with tools and I've got little toolboxes so I need to sort of start building sets up one of the reasons I haven't done it is because it's hard to know what what tools you need to put together for a particular set I and mean, yeah obviously soldering stuff goes with soldering stuff but some things it's not so straightforward and until you start using things you don't really know what's well, so until you start trying to do the projects, you don't know what things you actually need. Uh, there's stacks of discs. Uh, I did actually, I did sort through all the floppy disks some time ago as well. I think I did a time lapse video of that, but again, I've got a few things I've recorded and not, not bothered putting up. So I went through all the Amiga discs and sorted them so all the originals were together and all the discs for a set of originals, like disc one, two, three, were all together for a particular game. Um, software, uh, original software, copy software, cover discs. I think this is mostly cover discs. And I've got a few sets of uh, different Amiga discs. I've got a very small number that I kept for whatever reason when I got the Amiga. It's strange really that I decided to keep them. As, uh, I, th I think there's a lot of things I didn't really want to get rid of, but I just did. Um, so I've got those. I've got the big bunch of discs in three or four double disc boxes that a friend gave me before he went away to America and emigrated and then the Amiga 2000 that came with a bunch of stuff that was well I think I already said that was going to be thrown away so that was an, a nice rescue so I've been through all of that and and whatnot these are the bits off the A600 that I was working on so and yeah, I made use of this little little idea on the wall here finally. I, when I built this shelf, I put this sort of a, a corner strip on. I think it's sort of like for PVC windows and doors. It's got like a an angled bit on the corner edge and that's trapped between this um, beading and the edge of the board. And it just gives you like a lip that you can hang things on. So if you just fold a bit of paper over like that, you can just Sort of hang that on there and that's been quite useful actually I mean, it's the prints a bit small from here but it's good enough and it's worked so you can have sort of reference things up on the wall out of the way or visible but not on the desk taking up space which well I think a bit of paper on the desk is the least of my problems at the minute but uh, I'm not sure where the Amiga 600 is There's a bunch of stuff under here but it's not an Amiga 600 some parts um, Oh, I've got some RAM upgrades for it that I was having trouble with. I don't think I've mentioned those in the videos yet. So that's a um, one meg chip RAM upgrade with a clock port. And that's a four meg uh, fast RAM upgrade that clips on the CPU. I was having problems with this. Um, I should really have gotten back to the, the person I bought it off of. It was, it was very, really very helpful to be fair. So... Um, I don't think there's a problem with this as such or this. I think it's the, the Amiga 600 that I'm, I've been working on as temperamental. I don't really want to give too much away of what's going on with that. Um, but I have got now another Amiga 600, so um, I can perhaps test it on that and see if it works better. Now, these both seem to work individually, but when I put them together, this is throwing some kind of weird error. I'm getting some weird error on the screen. Perfectly honest, I can't remember what happened because so I've not looked at all of this for a while now. So, yeah, the Amiga 600. I'm going to try and do some more work on that this weekend, really. Just at least get another video up and out and try and get back to the one a week, which I was... I think I was doing one a week. I think I was doing more than one a week at one point. And I've got other old videos and I don't know what to do with them because 
I think well do I do I bother with them or not? I've got a video of about half an hour of me tearing a a four slice toaster down and dismantling it and seeing how it works and I think well I don't know. Are people interested in that or not? I don't know. But then again the most video views I've got is a review of a set of weighing scales so I, I don't know. So I hope everyone out there is uh, doing okay, doing the best they can with the current situation. Uh, I, I've got at least one friend who uh, who can't go out for the 12 weeks now so I'm uh, probably going to do the odd shopping trip for him uh, which to be fair I, I actually at least feel a little bit more useful having the the option to do that it may even be I mean I don't know I've seen there's a lot of volunteer things up so I may even consider that but it's just a difficult one because on the one hand you sort of want to stay out of the way but on the other hand you don't want to be at home useless not doing anything it's especially when there are people that really are putting themselves um, on the front line out there like the uh, the nurses and the, the people running the shops and the critical things that we need so yeah lot to think about anyway as I say I hope everyone's okay and now hopefully try and get some more videos out and a, an updated a600 video soon take care everyone